looks like a good day to test the uh, depower atomy. I'll have to do it first. Okay. Okay, these clusters have to be broken up. These are already split. Uh, these look okay. i leave them the way they are. These are already split. Okay, so basically we need two secondary bridle lines that'll take these two and these two. And uh, we'll keep the middle ones on the same line. So we just need to undo the uh, toe point. Pretty straightforward, it's a uh, lark's head. Same with the uh, cascade that we want to break up here. So we just got to open up the lark set here. Now we want to make sure there's no line stretch in these bridles. Even though the, uh, the tension will be three times less, we're splitting up three bridles. But you see, I'm going to use this line maybe. But when you put it under load, you can see there's quite a difference in stretch between the two. So this now here I have some 160, 176 pound spectra, and you can see that the tension is. Well, you see it's stretched out a little bit, but it's negligible. This this is much better line to work with. Now you see I have four of uh, four lines cloned now, and they're all. Yeah, so now uh, our uh, A, B, and C uh, bridles are all independent. So we can push and pull on them and change the angle of attack of our kite. Now for the uh, D-Power bridle itself, I'm going to take a look at my 15 square meter Aurora. What I'm going to do is measure the uh, cord uh, distance and I'll then scale from the Aurora down to the Atom uh, using the cord as a you know a reference dimension. So if we look at the uh, the Aurora, we've got a really sophisticated bridle. Si oh, this thing's huge. We have a really sophisticated bridle system on here. So let me open that up. Here we go. So oh, it's the leading edge on this side. Let me see here. I always tie on my uh, bridles to one of the lines here. In fact, sometimes I even make little pigtails for that. Um, here we go. So here's the D-Power bridle that we want to clone and scale down for our Atom. Uh, so it's a matter of uh, untangling it. There it is. So you see there's two pulleys and uh, Basically the brake line is on this side and the uh, power line, uh, the uh, toe point for the leading edge and the A, the A, B and C lines it all comes to this point here. So what we want to clone uh, basically is uh, this line, this line, this line, basically everything that goes up to these attachment points. This is the sling that we want to copy. Now here's a better view. So uh, here's our attachment points, the A, the B, C and D. And uh, we have the B line on this pulley, on this cascade here. We have a second one here that's going to the C. So basically the A is direct to the toe point. When we pull on the brake here, it pulls this one by half, this one by a quarter, and this one completely on, uh, on, the, on the D line. Now, in order to uh, to make mine as economical as possible, and I don't have access to these little pulleys, these are really nice. I'm just going to use um, chain links. I, I usually buy a, I go to the hardware store and I buy a, a foot of chain, and uh, I have a lot of fun with the uh, the salesman there uh, chopping the little links into separate pieces. I was telling you about uh, these are uh, I, I forget the size maybe 3 16 chain so basically I buy a foot and that gives me six links so real cheap so now I have to measure out I'm gonna make these lines here so I need six five four it's important to set your your loop on here 
and put a good tension on here. Let's see, six, five, four. That puts us right here. Now, what I do is I, I put a black dot here. I know that's going to stretch out a little more over time, so that's okay. I'm uh, I'm a bit on the cheap side today. I'm, I'm going to use a uh, polyester uh, line. And basically, you just loop it back and do your your knot here. Now, it's important that your knots are really well set. So, what I like to do is I like to basically clip it onto something solid here, and then basically grab the, the line and give it a good set. Now that knot is really hard as nails, and I can clip off the excess here, like this. So now I've got my bridle. The problem with uh, using knots though is that uh, lines tend to get uh, caught up on knots, so if you want to get real fancy, there's two things you can do. One is you can basically take a zigzag stitch and stitch both of these together. If you use a zipper foot, it'll actually bunch the two lines together quite nicely. This is really, really strong. Uh, and uh, there's very little for the lines to catch on. Uh, more sophisticated than that, uh, you, what you can do is you get a, um, it's a kind of a hollow needle that you can put the line in and basically you can feed the line into the other line and weave it through. And that's what uh, we use a lot, uh, rope splicing techniques that we use in sailboats. And uh, there's absolutely nothing for the line to get snagged on. Uh, and that's uh, really, really strong as well, stronger than the line itself. So here's my first uh, D-Power bridle uh, ready to install. I um, put the uh, blue pigtail uh, from the flying line back on the front, uh, and it's got a certain length. But now I realize... Okay, so now I have, uh, I'm starting to assemble the, the D-Power bridle. I've got all the A-lines here together and they're coming on to the uh, tow line here. Uh, I have all my uh, B lines. Now you'll notice here that I didn't break up the cascade on the end. I'm going to see if it flies well uh, like this. I put the, um, the B on, on here and the C on there. Hopefully that'll twist the wing tips and uh, give a good air break that'll turn the kite. So uh, that might be acceptable. If not, I'll have to break up this cascade and, and put it on A, B and C. Uh, same with the other one at the end. So basically, yeah, here, here's the, um, the first sling and it's going to go through this uh, first pulley, uh, chain link pulley, and uh, that gives us our first uh, cascade here. Uh, yep. now, so here we go, here's the uh, debridle uh, assembled and uh, we can see it, how it operates. And we can see that the uh, A, B, C and D points now here's where it's get, it gets interesting. I um, I have both toe points, the leading edge toe point and the brake, and I lined up my bridle here to allow for a bit of spread. And what I'm looking for here is, uh oh, I should normally get alignment of these four A, B, C, and D points, and obviously I I don't. Uh, probably the explanation for that, I think it's quite simple, it's the length of these chain links that's throwing everything off. So basically, uh, because these chain links added some uh, extra length in here, I'm just going to have to shorten up um, this line and this line accordingly. Or I could play around with this bridle line as well. Uh, either way, it, it, it should come out to the same result. What I have to do is I have to get all four of these in line when I'm in the fully powered up trim position. And uh, then of course the kite can then uh, have more or less angle attack about that point. But when you want to convert a fixed bridle kite to a uh, debridle system for depowering, uh, you have to have the same uh, trim position. Okay, so here we go. Um, I added a little knot here to shorten this length and I added another knot here. Now I have all three points, the A, the B, the C, and the D, all in a line. So I know I'm pretty close to uh, perfection here. Of course, as it spreads out, uh, these angles will become much less apparent. In fact, they actually come in line pretty well with each other. So I, I think this is good enough to, to make a flight test to see, to see what happens. Well, let's uh, give it a shot here. Full power, full brakes. Oh, 
Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Here we go. A little too much flying. Line. Looking good. Very responsive. No collapsing out on the outboard edge here. Look at that. 